Hi, Peter Strymer here, priest associate at Epiphany Parish, and I'm doing the third in my Lenten series of children's sermons being sent to you from where I am here in Florida. In this series, we've been talking about some of the most famous figures from what we call the Old Testament, and today and next week, we're going to talk about probably the most famous, the most important, and in some ways, the most interesting figure from the Old Testament, and that's Moses. Well, Moses was a Hebrew, and at the time he was born, the Hebrews were slaves in Egypt. And his mother, after he had, she had given birth to him, was afraid the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, might try to kill him. So she hid him in a basket and floated him down a river. And it happened that the Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, found the basket with the baby in it, and took the baby Moses home to her palace and there raised him as if he were her real son. And so Moses went from being a baby in a basket to a prince in a palace in the house of Pharaoh. Well, after some years, God decided it was going to be Moses who was going to set his people free. And God called Moses and said, this will be your job to deliver the people out of Egypt and to take them to the promised land. Well, this was not an easy job and Moses didn't feel ready for it. He didn't think he was a good speaker or a good leader, but God insisted it was going to be Moses to do this task. And it wasn't easy. Before they made their escape, there were 10 plagues in Egypt, sort of like the plague we have now with COVID, only 10 of them. And finally, after the last one passed, Moses decided it was time to make a break for it. And so they rounded up all the Hebrews, and they made their way out of Egypt on their way to the Promised Land. Well, that made the Pharaoh very angry. And so the Pharaoh mounted his army, loaded up his chariots, and chased the Hebrew people. Now, the Hebrews had found themselves right on the edge of the Red Sea, a huge body of water with nowhere to go. And so they had to either turn themselves in or die by drowning. But God had a third thing in mind. And God split the Red Sea and opened up a pathway in its mist. And the Hebrew people walked through the Red Sea on dry land. Well, just because they'd gotten out of Egypt didn't mean they had arrived in the Promised Land. In fact, they had to spend 40 years walking in the wilderness before they came to the land that became Israel. And they had many, many adventures and many challenges in that time. And in the midst of that time, God called Moses to a mountaintop and said to him, I am taking the Hebrew people and I'm going to make them a great nation called Israel. And any nation needs to have rules to live by. And so I'm going to give you a set of rules, 10 rules, 10 laws, 10 commandments. And so God wrote those 10 commandments on stone and gave them to Moses and he took them down to the people. Well, that was over 2,500 years ago. And yet those 10, 10 commandments are still the commandments by which we try to live today. You might remember them. I'll give you a quick summary. Number one, you shall have no other gods but God. Number two, you shall not make for yourself idols. Number three, you will not take the Lord's name in vain or misuse God's name. Number four, you will keep the Sabbath day holy. For us, that's Sunday. For the Jewish people, that's Saturday. Number five, respect your mother and father. Number six, you must not commit murder. Number seven, you must not commit adultery. Number eight, you must not steal. Number nine, you must not tell lies about your neighbor. And number 10, you shouldn't envy anything that your neighbor has. 
Well, that's a pretty good set of rules, and it certainly stood the test of time over these 2,500 years. And if you look at those rules, the last six are about how we're supposed to treat each other, and the first four are how we're supposed to think about God. And like any good list, the most important thing is at the very top. Number one, numero uno. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and have no other gods but God. So if we can remember all Ten Commandments and live by them, we're doing the best we can. But we remember that first commandment, that we are to love God. Now, Jesus came along, and he lived by these Ten, ten Commandments. But for his followers, that are the Christians, us, he decided he would give us a summary of those Ten Commandments. So those first four commandments that are about God and those late six are about our relationships with Jesus, I mean with each other, Jesus put it this way. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbors as yourself. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Well, I think that's a pretty good summary of what God told Moses and still tells us today. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. I hope we can all say amen to that. So now it's time for our prayers. So let's gather our thoughts and concerns about those in our lives for whom we want to pray. Almighty God, you saved Moses and the Hebrew people and led them out of Egypt to a land of promise. You gave them rules to live by in the Ten Commandments, and we promise to live by those same rules today. We pray this day as we always do for the homeless and needy. We pray for the elderly and the sick and all those who need to stay home to keep safe from the COVID virus. We hope that by all of us doing what we need to, the virus will go away and we can go back to our normal lives. We give thanks for those who have received vaccinations, and we pray you will grant patience to those who are still waiting. May you grant our prayers as they accord with your will. Amen. Hi everybody, welcome back to Craft Time. I'm Naomi, and today is our second day of our Lenten Craft series. So if you're able to join us last week, you know that we made our leaves with a little egg on it, and I told you to keep it somewhere safe because we're gonna keep adding to our Lenten Craft project. So it's really important if you're able, if you can join us each week so you know what the next piece of the project is going to be. So last week we did the leaves. So if you didn't catch us last week, go ahead and watch that video and we'll show you how to make these leaves. And then this week we are making these cute little caterpillars. Hopefully that looks like a caterpillar. So I'm gonna show you what you need. You're going to need some construction paper if you have it. And if you've been with us for a while, you know that you can always use plain white pieces of paper and then just use crayons and markers to color them in. And you're gonna need some scissors, some glue or tape, something to write or draw with. I have a marker here. And then if you have these, you're gonna need something circular that you can trace around. So you'll see that this caterpillar has a lot of round circles all put together. So this is a cap to, I think, some silly putty that my boys have. And then this is a size I used for the caterpillar. This is just a milk carton top or cap. And then just to give you a size reference, here's a quarter. So that's kind of the sizes you're working with. And if you want to use a quarter, you totally can. It will be a little bit smaller. So um, if you're able to cut around something smaller, that's great. If not, a milk carton cap or something a little bit bigger will work too. So those are the things you're gonna need. And to start off, you're gonna take whatever construction paper that you want or whatever color you wanna make the caterpillar. I made mine blue. 
but you can make it green or yellow or red. I think caterpillars come in all kind of all kinds of different colors. So once you have the color that you want, I folded mine in half so that when I trace the circles, I could get more circles at a time, right? So here's what I did earlier. I just folded a piece of paper in half and then I traced around whatever circular object you're gonna use. So I used this little milk carton cap and then I just cut out um, eight circles all together. There's four here, but because we folded it, it gives us eight. So go ahead and do that. Just um, trace around your circular object on the piece of paper that's folded and then cut them out. And then all you're going to do is glue them together and you can do it however you want. I just have kind of this one little bend, but you can have it go kind of more zigzag or maybe it's more just straight. So that's just how I did it. So it's kind of crawling like this, right? Because caterpillars, they kind of inch their way. Um, so once you have the circles cut out, go ahead and either tape it or glue them together. And then I just added some eyes. I cut these out from white pieces of paper. So if you did the leaf project last week, we did these little eggs and we had to cut out a little white circle. So same thing, just cut out two white circles. I put a little smile. And then I did add these little antennas because I think caterpillars have, I think they do have these little antennas. And then in order to make it not look like a worm, because I thought maybe people would think it's a worm, I did put these tiny little feet just to make sure people knew it wasn't a worm because worms definitely don't have little feet, caterpillars do. And the antennas and the feet, I just cut out these little strips of pieces of paper and then I just glued those onto the back of the caterpillar. And you can make more you know, feet if you want to, if you want to line them all the way up. I just did a few here. But once you have that all together, you'll have your sweet, cute little caterpillar. And fun fact, I actually don't really like caterpillars. They kind of scare me. I know that they're super fuzzy and soft, but they've always scared me. So I don't actually like caterpillars, but this one's pretty cute. Um, and so once you're done with that and you have your leaf, make sure, again, we keep these in a safe place because we're gonna use them at the very end for the finale of our project. So make sure we're storing these in a safe place each week and then come back next week and we're gonna make the next part of this project. So I hope you have fun and I'll see you next time.